All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, we are going to react to a Scap Attack video like the old days. This one's called Village Idiot Gilbert Arenas is here to save the NBA. Um, this one stuck out to me personally because uh, I feel a certain way about Gil. Um, he was a pretty cool basketball player for a couple of years, but um, yeah, man. Him as a media person disgusts me. Like his takes just disgust me. For a guy who got kicked out of the the, the the league for pulling a gun out of his locker and threatening his teammates, like, come on, man. You can't act like your crap don't stink. You know? Anyways, guys, uh, check out Scap. As always, shoot him some love. Um, link for the uh, video is going to be down below in the description. And, um, yeah, let's check this out together. Here we go. Well, Gilbert Arenas has been running his uneducated mouth for what seems like years now on his Gil's Arena platform. And in that time, he has been unabashedly slithering his way in front of a hot mic in order to shamelessly advance the interests of the clutch sports messaging. But as of late, Gil and his fellow clutch flunkies have been dealt a critical blow as the wheels of this propaganda machine have all but fallen off. See, Arenas was a voice for the uneducated teenagers hoisting up the lie of LeBron, who until yep. Arenas basically only had corrupt fake journalists on the take that were championing their fraud king. But in <laughs> Arenas, this was a former player that played in the heels of the Jordan era and during LeBron's. This was the voice they had been waiting on. And Gil did not disappoint, nope. as he has been spewing his hypocritical idiocy for a while now. The reason that I feel LeBron is the GOAT is because during pressure times, he still makes the actual right decision. No, not this LeBron makes the right play every time bullshit. If that was the case, would they not have won those six titles or at least more of them? And we wouldn't have just endless clips of him choking throughout his whole career, not just as an old man, not just as a young, young buck. Like all of you guys try to throw out about about Jordan. Oh, the Celtics beat him. Yeah, when he was a freaking second year player, second year, he was a kid. And and what? And what? He was second year coming off an injury. He wasn't even supposed to be out there, man. And you're going to hold that against him? No, no, we're not going to be petty like them. The, the, the Jordan haters are hilarious to me. Um, we don't focus on the prime. We're going to focus on him as a rookie or him as an old man. No, so screw that. Not even talking about how I knew that, that LeBron, I was worried he was going to be a choke artist his first couple of years. But I thought, let's give him a shot. Jordan, you know, Jordan wasn't a choker, but, you know, let, let's watch him develop and see what he becomes. And I'm not going to talk about him choking now as an old man, which he does. But no, let's not talk about that because that's not fair. You're too young, you're too old. But when the porridge was just right, LeBron James was choking just like, just like, just like he does now. Um, we've covered it here. Jordan didn't do that. So this I make the right play every time BS. I can't take it anymore. Because does that mean the right play is to walk, step out of the way and let your, you know, let the offensive player get a, a wide open dunk and then raise your arms up in anger and yell at your teammates, even though it was your fault? Is that the right play? Or to turn the ball over at the last second while you're, you've got Kyrie Irving guarding you and, uh, you know, you got a huge height advantage and you're just going to drop the ball into AD who's getting double, double teamed. Is that the right freaking play and lose the game, by the way? Or, yeah, have Jason Terry guarding you in 2011 during his prime, and you've got an ISO situation, and instead of taking him to the rack because you're the GOAT, you dish it off. Anyways, I went on a hell of a rant there. I'm sorry. But I am officially, like, I'm so sick of seeing it in the comments. Oh, Jordan versus Boston choked. No, he didn't choke. He actually lit up Boston, but 
You know, he's one guy. He couldn't get it done by himself. Did he choke? You kids don't know what the word choke means. Choke doesn't mean lose. You can lose with dignity. Choke means you crumbled. You were scared. You made mistakes because you were scared and nervous. Your anxiety beat you over. That's what a choke is. To lose to the, one of the greatest teams of all time, the Boston Celtics, in your second year, but lighting it up for 30-something points a game, that's not choking. That's overperforming. That's whooping some ass, but knowing you got a long way to go until you can win championships. Anyways, I'm done. Here we go. Unfortunately, his main talking point, like the scrub Gen Zers, was always the alleged super athletes of today versus the plumbers of past years. But sadly for Gil, the slow, unathletic Europeans showed up, are dominating this league of super athletes, and now Arenas is feeling triggered. Recently suggesting the way to improve the NBA is to kick all of them out of the league. Oh man, I forgot about that. Dude, that shit would not fly if it was the other way around, Gil. If they said every everybody that's like you needs to get out of the league, that shit wouldn't fly. So why is that okay when talking about white dudes? Huh? That's some bullshit. I, I know what they can do. They all know it, to too. I don't know if Scap's going to show it. Everybody on that show, on his panel, they're all like, oh, what'd you say? Like, <laughs> you can't say that. Get rid of all the Europeans. They have no athleticism. <laughs> they have no athleticism. They're trying to stop right? They have no speed, no jumping ability. They are a liability on defense. And look, they're... Yeah, they got fundamentals is what they got. And I'm sorry. Who else in the league has is is crushing it on defense? Um, I'm pretty sure Wemby wasn't born in this country. Gil's just so stupid, man. There <laughs> have been other highly skilled Europeans in the NBA yeah, over the Dirk? last two plus decades. Most notably, sixth all-time leading scorer Dirk Nowitzki. You know, Dirk. 14-time All-Star, 12-time All-NBA selection, and league MVP. Though he never really could take over the league during his era. In fact, he only managed one title in his 21-year career. Coincidentally, it Yeah, technically Kobe Bryant's a European too. Um, yeah, we're just going to leave it at that. Viva Italia. <laughs> came against the king of super athletes himself while he was on a jacked super team. But that unathletic European destroyed these super athletes while a six foot two bench player also outplayed Gil's goat. Yep. And now here we are in an era of ever advancing athleticism with Nikola Jokic utterly destroying these players while Luka Doncic is likely the best offensive force of at least the last decade. And yeah, the athleticism looks nice. It's pretty. It's very nice. But right now is an interesting time because basic fundamentals is winning. It just proved it last year. Basic fundamentals from players with no athleticism are beating players with insane athleticism. I didn't see John Morant in the finals. You know, I don't see Atman in the finals yet. Um who else, man? I mean, there's 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 some freaking natures out there. That I'm not thinking thinking of. Um, yeah, they're just not popping in my head right now. But you guys know who I'm talking about. The guys who look like they can freaking fly right now. I don't see them winning. But the guys who can't get like one inch off the floor, they have to practice the fundamentals, and they're crushing it right now. And you know, Gilbert Arenas is taking exception with all of it. Because why exactly? Those players aren't playing any defense. You people, oh. Which is just such an utterly rich take by him if you understand the context of his own NBA career. Yep, yep, do it. Do it, Scap. Do it. This guy did nothing. He just racked up a bunch of points. Show it. 
Hertz, of course, rose to national prominence in the 2004-2005 NBA season, where at just the age of 23, he averaged 25.5 points per game and was named All-NBA third team. Arenas would go on to have an elite three-year span yep. from 2005 through 2007. Yep, he was a bocce for a couple years. Um, but yeah, I don't think he got out of the second round. Averaging 28 points per game, six assists, and four rebounds in an NBA where they actually did still play defense. Hold up. Arenas was named to two All-NBA still play defense. Hold up. Where they actually ah. did still play and four rebounds. 27, what, let's give him 28, six, and four. He was playing point guard, so the six assists not is nothing, four rebounds is meh. But the 27 points, the 28 points, yeah, man, he was he was the real deal. As far as uh, uh, being a gunner, like, Gil could shoot, but it was his mental that was always uh, his detriment. Couldn't play a lick of defense, and his brain was messed up, man. Still is to this day. That's why he says all this crazy crap and gets away with it. His brain is not there, man. Something is wrong up there. In an NBA where they actually did still play defense, Arenas was named to two All-NBA third teams and one All-NBA second team during that three-year stretch. And Agent Zero would parlay the three-year run into a massive payday in July of 2008, when he signed a six-year contract worth, at the time, a near-max deal of $111 million with the Wizards by just the age of 26. Yeah, he was hiding an injury, too. But the hibachi would never quite live up to that contract. Hell, he would barely even play throughout that contract. As again, yep. despite being only 26 at the time, Gill would play only 121 more games in the NBA while scoring just 13 points per game during his aged 27. Damn. Yeah, so um, from the horse's mouth himself, Gill said that, yeah, he was, he knew, I think it was his knee, was like destroyed. Um, but he was hiding it from the team. So he can secure that that long term contract. I think it was four or five year contract. That was like hundred something million dollars. You just heard it. Um, but yeah, so he kind of. I mean, it's money. I I'm not gonna really have much of a opinion on it. But yeah, he kind of uh, he kind of robbed the Wizards there, and that was it. So look at him, thirteen point six for the rest of his 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 NBA career. He was. Like that's like Scottie Pippen numbers, without all the positives that Scottie Pippen brought, you know, because I don't think he was getting those rebounds and steals and playing that that lockdown defense. He's just getting thirteen freaking points a game, and he's the highest paid player on the team. Yeah, that's some bullshit. Through thirty seasons. He would ultimately be traded from Washington to Orlando and appeared in 17 games <laughs> with the Grizzlies before busting out of the NBA altogether. Yeah, he, and he played, what, uh, Big Three? I, th I saw a game of his uh, out of curiosity recently where he played in the Big Three, but his knees are just shot. His legs are done. Playing one season with the Shanghai Sharks Whoa. at the age of 31. Oh yeah, and there was, of course, that pesky little incident where he brought a firearm into an NBA arena. Been waiting for him to talk about this. In direct violation of both NBA rules as well as a Washington DC ordinance. But that wasn't all. He also, allegedly, pulled the gun on teammate Javaris Crittenton yep. in the locker room yep. during a Christmas Eve dispute, which initially began over gambling debts. Dude, it was Christmas Eve as well? So yeah, good teammate, good leader. Gambling with your team, and uh, you're going to pull a gun on your team in the locker room, in the arena. Good leader. I really care what he has to say about basketball. Like, you kidding me? He should not have the right to criticize anybody. 
and on January of 2010. The league would suspend Arenas indefinitely before they even concluded the investigation into that incident when this low character bum took the court in pregame introductions before a game against the 76ers and pretended to shoot his teammates. But when he wasn't busy making a mockery of his $100 million contract, which still stands as one of the worst in sports history yeah. with this thuggish behavior, Gil never was a very high-level defender. Nope. In the best year of his career, in the 2006-2007 season, where he finished 8th in league MVP voting and made All-NBA second team, he was just 411th in defensive rating out of 458 qualified players in the entire league. So perhaps Gill has some fuzzy memories about the defense at least he was playing back in the day. Yeah, it's, it's what kills me. One of the many things. He remembers himself as one of the greats. Every time he talks, it, it's, it blows my mind. He had three pretty good years. And that's it. This is not our league. This is not the American style. This is the Euro style. Meanwhile, this is... We're supposed to be the best players in, in, in the world here. So the best players in the world come here. Because we're supposed to be the best league. So what is this no European bullshit? What kind of take is that? And we're not even doing it right. Lucas straight up said... It's easier to score in the NBA than it was in Europe. So, yeah, you can't, you can't blame them. The league now, and we are smack dab in the highest scoring season in post-merger modern NBA history. The Europeans didn't yeah, make it D, this Good way. D, LeBron. Good D. Just step out of the way. Yep. Play with your uh, little uh, Allen Iverson armband. Your brace. That's cool. Good job. In fact, Luka Doncic is on record as saying the Euro League is harder than the NBA. And that's why I love Scap. I swear to God, every time I have a thought, he comes. He's he's right there with it. But this is the product the league offices wanted by incentivizing and celebrating soft, pampered losers like Gilbert Arenas himself. He couldn't cut it in a real league during real times. Nope. So the entire product has been depreciated to suit oh, players with his low character and general soft mental deficiencies. And now, frankly, not just the Europeans, all foreign born players are taking over the NBA. Easily the five best players in the league today are all non-Americans. And a budding monster in Victor Wembanyama is smack dab in one of the best rookie seasons ever. Yep. Yeah, make no mistake. It wasn't the Europeans that did this to the league. No. They are just excelling in this new format. And in order to determine how we got to this new brand of basketball, Gilbert and the <laughs> other soft, weak-ass United-born players that came after him need only look at themselves in the mirror. Man, I love Scap. Man, okay. So, I'm picking fundamentals over athleticism. And here's how to find out if you agree. Um, who you got? Zion or um, Joker? Who you taking? Because I'm taking Joker 10 out of 10 times. I don't care how good Zion can dunk. Anyways, everybody, what's your take on Gilbert Arenas? Uh, you've heard my take. I could talk for an hour about about Gilbert because the guy makes me want to puke. But I'm not going to do it because I don't feel like throwing up tonight. So let me know down below what you think. And also let me know down below who you got. Who would you pick? Joker or Zion? And that's how you know where you stand. And what's more impressive right now? That's Europe versus America. And it's also athleticism versus Europe. I'm sorry, athleticism versus uh, uh, fundamentals. Anyways, uh, like the video if you enjoyed this. Check out Scap's channel if you haven't. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you enjoyed this content. I'll have another video out tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Peace out.